Hi everybody, welcome back to another video for scientific notation this time. Um, this time we're going to be looking at how to write really big numbers and really small numbers so that people can easily understand and read them. So scientific notation, it's when numbers are too big or too small to be conveniently written. Scientists use scientific notation. So if you're someone who studies space, you are not going to want to write out all the zeros each time you figure something out. And then in order to be a scientist, you have to have people verify your discoveries and check your work. And wouldn't it be terrible if someone thought you were wrong because they counted the number of zeros incorrectly? So for example, this one here, huge number. Um, hmm, I, let's start here, I guess. There's three zeros. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 24 numbers um, behind the five. And I'll explain why I'm doing just the five in a moment. So it's going to be 5.9737 times 10 to the 24th power. Um, that might not be significant to us, but if you're someone who works in large numbers, you'll be able to use that. Say, oh, yeah, to the 24th power. That makes sense. Okay. Um, also, people who work with really tiny things, the mass of a carbon atom is about this amount. And this number is very small in standard form, but can be expressed as... These are the worst because there aren't commas there to count. Um, maybe we can do every three just to see what we have. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and then there would be 28. Okay, so this is going to be one. 0.66 times 10 to the negative 28th power. All right, so these are two examples of things written that are much easier to read and understand if they are written in scientific notation. So here's how we do it. All right, if you want to write a number in scientific notation, it will always be the number times 10 to the exponent that you have here. And the n, the number you see here, specifically has to be between 1 and 10. It could be equal to 1, has to be less than 10. So 9.99998 is still less than 10. That would work. So again, the number here has to always be in this single digit form. So if you had 3.42 times 10 to the third power, there you go. A number between 1 and 10 times 10 to the whatever the exponent is. Well, how do we know if they're big or small? And this is how we know. Positive exponents used with numbers that are large. Now, large is, I guess, comparative since it could be one as well. But basically, anything one and over is a large number. Usually, it's huge numbers like you see here. Negative exponents are ones that you use with numbers that are small. Again, this is very, very tiny. This is a lot less than one. But again, that's going to be negative exponent in your answer. So let's see. Changing scientific notation to or standard notation to scientific notation. So the way we normally write numbers is our standard notation. And because of that, um, it looks like this. In order to make it scientific notation, we have to move the decimal point. So there's only one number to the left of the decimal point, and all the rest of the numbers follow after. And notice that I moved it one, two, three, four places to get it there. So in scientific notation, it'd be 6.5 times 10 to the, we moved the decimal point four places, we moved it back four places. Remember, it's this very small number to the negative fourth power. On this one, I want to move the decimal point behind the very first standard number that's not zero. I want to move it right here. So I'd have to move it back one, two places, in which case this would be 1.051 times 10 to the negative second power. Again, you write all the numbers out. Once you get to all zeros in front or all zeros behind, you don't have to worry about that. That'd just be like saying you have the number 200. You don't have to write zeros forever and ever after the decimal point. You're good to go. All right, big numbers. Here they are. Again, we want one number, one digit, decimal point, and then all the other digits. Oh, there's all kinds of things on the paper today. All right, so we want the decimal point to be here. But in a big number, the decimal point would have been right here at the end. So 
answer is going to be 3.4 times 10. And we had to move the decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places to get it there. So 10 to the 6th power. And here, 8.521 times 10. We had a decimal point here. We want to move it there. 1, 2, 3 places to the 3rd power. All right. Now if we go the other direction, scientific notation to standard notation, again, if you want to think like big and small, that usually helps me decide which way to move the decimal point. And so in this case, 3.8 times 10 to the negative fifth power. Negative fifth tells me it's going to be a tiny number. I'm going to move my decimal point to the left. So I had a 3 and an 8. The decimal point was here, but I move it back five places. One, two, three, four, five. The empty spots get filled with zeros. So I need four of them, and then the fifth spot was the three. And there we go, 0. 0.000038. Um, we'll do the same thing with 10 to the negative third power, negative third, small number, move the decimal point to the left. I had a four, a two, and a one. The decimal point was here, but I want to move it back three places. One, two, three, fill in the missing spots with zeros, and again, start off with a zero there as well. Big numbers, we're going to move. The exponent, or sorry, the decimal point to the right. And so in this case, 2.5, 2, 5. We had the decimal point between the 2 and the 5. But now I want to move it 8 places to the right. So I'm going to move it back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, notice that I moved it past the 5. That's 1. So technically I need 7 more zeros after. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If you notice, I didn't line them up with the little curves, but that's how many I needed. Here, same thing. We had a six. Decimal point would have been after it. So we want to move it three places from right here, which means I'm going to need one, two, three zeros. And there it is. Um, let's see. We can also put commas here, comma, comma. And we have 250 million and then 6,000 is here. That is writing in scientific notation and how to change it from one form to the other. Bye, guys.